Don't you just hate it when you've been out filming all day only to realize that when you get back to the edit suite that some of your audio has been affected by a glitch, a pop, some static, or something that essentially is rendering that clip completely unusable? Well, the great news is that inside of DaVinci Resolve 17, we have some really advanced audio cleanup tools which can help us because we can edit audio at the sample level. Now, if you don't know what that means or how it is actually gonna to apply to you, then stick around because I'll show you how we can use this particular tool inside of DaVinci Resolve to clean up your audio. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 17 and I'm on the Fairlight page. And the reason I'm on the Fairlight page is because this is where we get access to the sample level editing that I've been talking about. So just to show you what I mean by that, if I come to the edit page firstly, and you can see here we've got a timeline and we have audio only in audio track one. Now, of course, when we are editing with video, we are limited to frames per second. We are capturing one frame every single second of video. So that's why when we zoom in all the way on our timeline, we are only able to move the playhead forward or backward a frame at a time. As you can see here, going through with the left and right arrow keys, I'm moving forward a single frame every single time. And those frames are denoted here by these little markers on the play range. So moving through or backwards frame at a time is all very well and good, but let's say we want to get in a bit closer than that because we're trying to isolate a particular spike of audio that we want to get rid of. Well, we can't do that on the edit page because we can't zoom in close enough at all. And again, if we come back to the Fairlight page, and I'll show you again what happens if I zoom in all the way here. So let me just jump to the red marker and I'll zoom in all the way and I'll keep going. So now we're sort of at frame level and you can see how we're moving through. There's our glitch that we want to remove. And we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna keep zooming in and now when we see these little dots appearing on our waveform, we are at sample level. So this is however many thousand samples you're recording every single second, this is now where they will display it. And because we've now got access to this in the Fairlight page, we can actually edit that. So this is where it's really helpful. Let me just zoom out again and we'll just play back the problem we've got. So we've got a nice bit of music here, but there is a spike, which is a glitch in the audio and it means that it's technically not usable, right? Just play it, let's do that again. Let me just zoom a bit further so you can get a bit of context. Okay, so not helpful. That little bit of audio is really just causing a problem. And again, if we were to kind of come into sort of frame level, let me just show you what frame level here would look like. And if I place my timeline playhead on it, it will help. There we go. So when I zoom in, you'll see that if I wanted to remove a frame, that's a big space, right? So it's from the red marker all the way over there. So that's a huge space that I would actually be taking out of our music if I just were to try and delete that frame. So there's too much there to remove. So this is where sample audio editing comes in because we can dial in a lot closer and we can completely remove this spike. Before we do that though, I wanna just give you a little tip because as you can see here, when we move forward a frame at a time, we're jumping an awfully large space. So it can get quickly out of hand if you should start playing it. Before you know it, you're way down the timeline, right? So what I want to do is actually, let's just zoom out a second again. We're gonna press Shift Z to zoom out. I'm gonna position my playhead over the red marker. And I'm going to zoom in again. Just going to jump in here to say really quickly that the channel recently passed 4,000 subscribers and I couldn't be happier. Thank you so much indeed to all of you who have helped make that happen. It really does mean the world and I want to take this channel onwards and upwards. So hopefully we can maybe hit 5,000 by the end of the year. That would be a great thing. I'm hoping that we can do that. And again, it really helps by just letting people know about the channel and making sure you hit like whenever you can. And of course, making sure you're subscribed because actually as it happens, most people who watch this video will probably not be subscribed already. So if you're not, click the channel, make sure you're subscribed and watch a few more videos as well. That would be cool. Thank you very much indeed guys. Let's jump back into the video. So what I want to do this time is just create a small play range to make it very easy for us to not get lost in the particular timeline. So let's move our timeline playhead over the actual glitch itself. And then what we're gonna do is just zoom right in so it stays nice and centered. Okay, and we're gonna zoom in just to when the samples start to appear on the timeline. I'm gonna center that up a bit and we're just gonna use the range selection mode to create our range. So let's do that now. So click that from the toolbar and then just drag out a small area just around your particular sample you want to get rid of. And then what we're gonna do is when the cursor turns into the hand, so just hovering over that selected part of the clip, make sure it's in the hand and then left click, hold and drag down ever so slightly. And what that's done now, and you may not be able to see that it's done anything, but if we come back to our selection mode, you can see that we've actually created a new clip. So this is now a brand new clip, or not a brand new clip, but a section of the clip, and we can independently select it. But more importantly, we can use the up and down 
arrow keys to navigate to the front and end of this particular clip, which is really helpful because, for example, if we get lost, let me just clear my range completely. If we play forward from here and we're way down the timeline, now if I just press the up and arrow, down arrow keys, I can get back to the particular sample that I'm working on. So that's really helpful and it saves a lot of time. Trust me, I've navigated way down the timeline before, got completely lost, and it's zooming out and zooming back in again. So it can take a lot of time. So here we are, we have that particular problem audio that we want to remove. So how do we do that? Well, now that we're in sample level, you'll notice that as I hover my mouse over the samples, they turn red, and we're gonna find the one that we like the look of that's close to this middle line, because this middle line obviously represents zero audio, so no audio whatsoever. So we're going to select one that we like. When we've got the one we like, we're gonna left click down and hold, and then we're gonna slowly drag to the right, keeping things as close to that center line as possible like so, and we're going to do the same again this side, about here, because of course remember this is a stereo clip, so we need to do the top and bottom channel, so the left and right channel, there we go, and we've now drawn a nice straight line, so this audio has now been removed, taken away completely, and just to show that we have done that, let's move back out, and I'm going to play this forward from here for you, just to get a feel for it, there we go, it's gone. And if you feel like you need to do some work on it, you can simply zoom back in. And again, we're gonna use the up and down arrows to help us here. Zoom back in and we can re-edit things. So for example, if let's say we'd made a mistake and we probably weren't quite close enough, we'd, we could actually zoom in a bit closer if we wanted to, be a bit more detailed, make sure we're on the right level. And let's say that maybe here we weren't close enough to the line, so we could just simply hover over the sample, left click, down, hold and drag. And you can drag back and forth a number of different times until you're happy. There we go. And if you're happy, then we can then simply come back out Again, if we wanted to, we could completely redraw. No problem at all with that if you wanted to do that, but again, we don't need to. So let's come out again. Let's say you've made a complete mess as well. Let's say that, oh, you know, I've gone all over the show, not happy, I just want to reset things back to how they were. Don't worry, it's completely non-destructive. So you simply make sure your clip's selected, right click, and then come down to Reset Edited Samples, and voila, everything is back to normal. But for now, I'm just going to undo that because I'm quite happy with the sample and the fix that we've made. I'm gonna zoom out one more time and just re-listen to this piece. Awesome, very good. So you can see that the Fellow page has got some useful little tricks up its sleeve, especially when it comes to editing audio at the sample level. So there we go, really quite a simple technique when you know what you're doing, but I hope that was helpful to you guys. And again, this is an opportune moment to say, if it was useful, pop the like button on, let me know that it was a good job. It makes me feel great to know that I put some good content out, but also it helps other people know that it's worth watching the video as well. So thank you very much if you've been able to pop the like button on for me. That does mean the world. But also let me know in the comments below, did you know about this particular technique already? If you did, that's smashing, let me know chat it out a little bit but if you didn't let me know as well because I'd be really interested because I think this is a little bit of a hidden feature that you wouldn't necessarily know about unless you've done some advanced training. Now again that's it from me though thank you very much indeed guys if you'd like to follow me on Instagram you're more than welcome to I'd love to see you there equally if you'd like to help support the channel then you're more than welcome to do so and I'd be incredibly indebted to you equally if you have any questions then you can pop them in the comments below I will try to get them as quickly as possible but for all of the supporters on the channel by heading over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Alex Cameron and supporting the channel I will definitely endeavor to get back to you much much faster so if you've got particular burning questions about DaVinci Resolve 17 then I may well be able to help and I'd love to do that if I can. But in the meantime guys, stay safe, keep editing and I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.